Thank you. So I want to start by saying, if your business card looks like that, could you please leave? Um, I have a story that would probably lose me my liquor license, so uh, I have a friend of mine who comes to my bar every Thursday, and he was in not too long ago and came in, he was looking a little bit forlorn, and I said, Justin, what's going on? He said, well, I'm going to be out of town for the next couple weeks, and I'm not going to be able to have any of your delicious cocktails. So I said, well, I got a solution for that. So I went back into the bar and um, made a couple cocktails and then took them back in the kitchen and put them in our vacuum seal machine. And he took them with us, with him, to the Philippines. And while he was there, he went out in the Philippines Bay and opened up this um, vacuum sealed cocktail and um, drank it in the Philippines Bay. And so now every time he has a Martinez, through the power of association of the flavors in your mouth, um, he will be brought back to the Philippines Bay. So that brings me to what I'm going to talk to you about, about cocktails and the power of cocktails today. So a little bit of, um, first of all, I, sorry, getting a little ahead of myself. Um, so Seattle is one of the best places in the country to be a drunk, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, GQ just said that we have two of the top 25 cocktail bars in the country, uh, Zigzag and the place I work, Tavern Law. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and I, I suppose I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, and I should talk a little bit about the history of cocktails. So in 1862, Jerry Thomas wrote the first cocktail book ever written. That's him right there. He's doing a blue blazer. It's fire thrown between two glasses. He was a bit of a showman. And he, um, prior to that, people thought that cocktails should be, you know, a secret, that the recipes were, you know, the tradesmen, the, that they're their own personal thing. He decided that he was going to be a celebrity bartender, and um, back in the 19th, or excuse me, 19th century, he, um, a bartender was considered a true craft, um, and they... I'm really bad at public speaking. I apologize. <laughs> ah! Okay, so prohibition happened, and that sucked. Um, prohibition ends, that's great. The problem with prohibition ending is that nobody had any backstock of liquor. So the spirit companies and in their infinite marketing wisdom, they came up with a two-fold marketing plan. The first part of that was to market blended whiskey. Blended whiskey is just whiskey and grain neutral spirits. They came up with the highball, which is that. It's whiskey, ice, and soda water. Pretty boring, but it does the job. The second part of their plan was to market a previously unused spirit, namely vodka. Vodka, it, for all of you vodka drinkers out there, um, it's because the, the marketing company that was behind this wanted you to drink it. So try something else, explore your palate, um, <laughs> do something a little more interesting. So after Prohibition was over and um, they had to they had vodka on the market. They came up with these really super sweet cocktails that were a byproduct of people drinking. Um, they, in, during Prohibition, they had to use really sugary sweet cocktails to cover up the bad taste of alcohol. That brings us into the 1950s with obviously Mad Men and everything um, and just straight basic martinis, really boring cocktails. Then come along the 90s and the early 2000s with Sex and the City. And I, any other bartenders out there, I apologize for saying this. Um, thank God for Sex and the City and the Cosmo because it actually got people drinking more interesting spirits. It got people exposed to the idea that there was more than just a glass of wine and a beer. And so here's a little list of a bunch of the classic cocktails that we have been doing recently. And... Um, Moving forward, people are really starting to pair cocktails with food, which is really cool because you can create a cocktail and then create food to go with it or vice versa. You don't have to worry about like wine where it's, it is what it is and then you need to create a dish around it. And some of the technology that we're using to do this is um, the vacuum sealer and the immersion circulator. Um, in days gone by to make, for instance, allspice dram, it would take about six months uh, sitting in a mason jar, and uh, now with the immersion circulator, I can put everything in a bag, drop it in the immersion circulator for six hours at 165 degrees, and get the same effect. Um, and the Savoy. You should definitely check out Stumbling Through the Savoy. It's a great website where this guy is doing all 750 cocktails in the Savoy in chronological order, 
And if he can't find a product to make it, then he goes out and makes the product or bugs the companies for the recipe so that they can, um, so he can make it himself. And with that, I had a list of bars. I was running a little slow. Go find me there. I'll be drinking there sometime probably tonight. Thank you. Thank you.